Hello everyone, welcome to Gossip Verworks. My name is James and today we'll be doing another locomotive review. This one being the Depo LBSCR Terrier. Uh, I have got two of them, so I can do a little bit more uh, showing off uh, the details you can get. But first of all, the boring bits, which are uh, the uh, product code. I'll just do, actually I can do both of them as it's not that hard. It's uh, S, uh, 2S012002 for the uh, lined green terrier, which has the ring number of 2659 in southern green, that is. And the other one is the same number but from uh, 003 at the end in BR lined black uh, with lake crest, ring number of 32670. Uh, inside the pack. Ooh, ah. I do get a detail pack, which doesn't really have much uh, detail pack in it. Uh, I think it's just uh, alternative couplings and stuff like that. Doesn't look all that much because uh, there's not really much to add to the Terrier. But uh, yes, it does have NEM pockets on both ends. I'll just pop that there. I'll pop them there as well and get this ready. There we are. But uh, yes, they do have NEM pockets on both ends. Uh, I will be uh, mostly showing the green one because it's a bit easier to see on camera. Uh, it does have, uh, first of all, it's got very nice lining. It's very, for its size, it's got a decent amount of weight, but it's a very tiny little thing. So what weight it has got, it's uh, still light compared to everything else. Uh, so yes, uh, NEM pockets. Uh, and then pockets for either end. It's not DCC compatible. Well, you can hardwire it to be DCC uh, running. However, it's uh, not immediately DCC compatible because it's a very tiny little locomotive. Uh, it's only what That's a ruler, uh, not including uh, couplings. It's about two inches long. So uh, yeah very tiny but it does have a very large amount of detail and uh, yes it's got uh, the running number on the front buffer beam it's got the uh, uh, it's got the vacuum pumps and uh, pipes and stuff like that and dangly bits which I can never remember what the name is um, <laughs> and vacuum pipes on the rear as well and a little uh, toolbox or something like that it has got a very minor uh, little look of some coal in there. It's not going to be much because uh, it's probably hollow so there's a bit more space inside. But it has got all these uh, handrails everywhere. It's got these uh, other little nice things there and also uh, it does have one on there. Uh, I've noticed on my O-Gates one it does have a pipe running from um, the smoke box all the way to the cab. I don't know what that uh, pipe is for but it's a very nice nod to extra detail. The lining is superb and the uh, pressed on uh, printed um, like numbering and uh, letters and stuff like that is all well and fine. So uh, yeah, that's the uh, green one and the black one. Uh, my one is, got some hairs caught there. Uh, my one is slightly um, damaged on the front but that's because it is uh, second hand but Let's have a quick look there. Uh, it doesn't have uh, the run number on the buff beam, but it does have it on the smoke box cab. Uh, you can get these in so many liveries, it is probably wor uh, worthless for me to mention everything, but you can get it in uh, LBS uh, uh, improved ends and green, which is actually orange. Uh, you can get umber brown at some point for as LBSCR. Uh, you can get Southern Green, you can get uh, Great Western Green, because it was Great Western. Several private owner greens, you can get it in um, LSWR, SECR, Black, all the several lot. It's got so many liveries, it's <laughs> it's nearly countless to count, count them all. Probably something in the range of 10 to 12 different liveries for the, this, just this little ends in here and it's astounding and um, yeah you, you could probably run this on a layout and nobody would really know it if you got the right livery for it and nobody would really bat an eye apart from oh it's a terrier 
But uh, yes, let's have a look at how much this weighs. I will weigh both of them just to be on the safe side. So green one first, and that weighs just under uh, 20 grams. It's 19.6. And this one, 19.5. So it's within, uh, it's basically 19 and a half grams. So yes. That is a very little amount of weight for a locomotive. Uh, it's less than a Mark 1 coat by a good 5 grams. And uh, yeah, it has got all wheel pickup, which is very nice, but it will, ha due to its small wheelbase, it will have issues with um, getting over uh, lots of frog points. But that's not really a problem with my layout anymore. Uh, the price. It's roughly about 70 to 80 pound, which is for a locomotive this size, it's decently well. But um, anyway, I'm going to put both of these onto my turntable so I can save them both together, and then I'll tell you a bit more about the uh, prototype. Then we can get it onto my layout and see how much uh, one of these can pull. So I'll see you in a sec. The London Brighton South Coast Railway A1 class is a class of 060 tank steam locomotive. Designed by William Strowley, 50 members of the class were built in 1872 and between 1874 and 1880, all at Brighton Works. The class has received several nicknames, initially being known as Rooters by the South London crews. However, the ensigns were more famously known as Terriers on account of the distinctive bark of their exhaust beat. After displacement from the original working of commuter trains, for out of London Bridge and London Victoria, both the more powerful locomotives from the D class and early stages of the LBSCR overhead electrification scheme, some members of the class were sold to other operators, while the majority of the remainder were put to work on branch lines in Sussex and on non revenue earning work such as shunting. They were known to reach speeds of up to 60 miles per hour. With these new uses being found, the class remained in service on the system, surviving to be taken into ownership by the Southern Railway from 1923 and by British Railways from 1948. Although the number of engines dwindled following the Second World War, as the work they were used for was either dieselised or lost to rail through the closure of branch lines and yards, a number continued in operation through into the 60s, most famously on the Hailing Island branch line in Hampshire. The withdrawal of the final members of the class finally came in 1963, the line to Hailing having closed in the November of that year. Ten members of the class have been preserved. Well, here we are with the Terrier on the uh, Bolton Port layout, uh, and also a somewhat smaller test rake of only five Mark 1s. I uh, have tested it with eight, but I'll get onto that in a bit. But uh, I'll be testing the green one only. Uh, but I will point out one thing between the, uh, the two versions is that if you look carefully the coal bunker is actually different sizes between them. This one's actually extended and doesn't have a toolbox on the back. So uh, yeah, that's a nice little extra uh, variance between them. But yeah, the reason I'm not testing this one is because it's, so since it's pre-owned it's a bit of a awkward run. It doesn't, it works but it's a bit, it's a bit iffy. But anyway, not get caught by a tree. Let's test out the slow speed of the Terrier. We'll point out that um, it does need a little bit of extra power just to get it moving, but it can be slowed down afterwards. Ooh, excuse me. So. As it slow as it can go, and nope, it's stalled actually. <laughs> Let's test it in reverse instead. Yeah, you can do a decently slow speed. Is it? Make sure it's not caught in something. There we go. Yeah, unfortunately, my track needs to be cleaned a bit more. As uh, unfortunately, the terrier does need it. does seem to be very susceptible to any issues with the track. So, if the track's not clean, well, perfectly clean, it will um, ha no, 
have issues picking up stuff, so make sure your track is cleaned. Anyway, make sure it's in forward. Let's see how far, uh, well, how well it goes around the track. Gonna give it a bit of power, just so it doesn't have any issues. Because I tried this once before and it got stuck in the tunnel. <laughs> Seems to be going around quite well. It does stutter a little bit on points, but considering its size, it's not really that surprising. Let's try and find it. There we are. I'm going to bring it to a stop. You can get a decent speed, uh, slow speed out of it. Anyway, just pick her up and stick it right. Just make sure we oh, make sure we are on the track and connect the terrier up to the Mark Ones. Uh, each one of these is actually uh, five grams heavier than the uh, terrier, so. Uh, 5 times 25 is 125 grams, so this is over 6 times the weight of, in fact this might be 7 times the weight of the Terrier. So uh, yeah, let's see how it goes with this test. Slight bit of wheel slip, if you give it enough power It doesn't seem to have that many issues. It does have a little bit of slowdown, but there is a little a bit of a slope it back there. But otherwise, it can pull seven times its own weight. So it does slow down a little bit, but it still continues. So if you're going to make it pull anything, to, uh, no, any long trains, I would recommend keeping it flattened, no flattened level. Just going to put it into a stop. I will point out it does actually sound like a bee buzzing, <laughs> in my opinion. But uh, yeah, it can pull fire coaches with general ease. If you want to go up any inclines or anything like that, I would recommend shortening the train, probably to something like three coaches probably, which is a bit more prototypical anyway, because these things wouldn't have pulled uh, too long for coach uh, train anyway. I have tested it with uh, eight coaches, which is uh, ten times its own weight. In fact, it'll probably be more than that. Uh, but uh, Actually, only slightly bit more, but uh, yeah, I've tested it with eight coaters. It will pull eight coaters, but it will struggle on any slight incline, which is what I have on my um, uh, bit around here. I have a very slight incline of from here upwards, and it kind of stalled. So uh, yeah, it can pull eight coaters, but I would not recommend it unless you've got a very flat track. But uh, yeah, this has been a very nice test. Let's see if we can get both of them running. I did have a go before, but uh, as I said, the black ones are not all that. Oop. Yeah. It's not as good as the other one. Really have to look at that one. Anyway, let's send up the green one. And watch it go round and out. Yeah. So I've tested tested this one. It runs fine using a battery. Yeah, it doesn't like my layout. I don't know, understand either. Anyway, 
this one's Ains and Gosford Railworks and I hope you enjoyed the video here it comes again <laughs> I always love the terrier. Anyway, feel free to subscribe, comment, and like the video if you want to. And uh, yeah, take care, and hope you enjoy your day. So, see ya. Off goes the terrier. <laughs>